by French accent. And so I will speak to you about uh, source specific uh, routing. So, sorry, I am Mathieu Boutier, and it's a joint work with uh, Julius Promotion. So, I'm speaking about source specific routing uh, in the context of multi homing and also, of course, wireless mesh networks. So, multi homing basically is to be connected to multiple ISP. So, a host can be multi home so for, for example, your smartphone can be connected both to this 3G network, so, to, uh, so through a provider, but also to your Wi-Fi. And also, your network can be multi home so your network can be connected to Orbanus, Store 3, or your fabric provider, multiple, not, uh, many uh, technologies. And the point is that we want multi homing because if you have only one gateway here, well, I want to be near the gateway. Uh, however, multi homing is difficult. So it provides reliability. So if one gateway, if D1 gets down, you continue to have uh, internet connectivity through the other gateway. And you can also achieve better performance by load balance through the two gateways. The problem is that uh, achieving both reliability and performance uh, is very difficult, especially while keeping a live TCP connection. So basically, multi homing is achieved by acquiring a prefix, a provider independent prefix. Uh, this advantage of, uh, of this configuration, of this uh, topology, is that you didn't need any configurations. So you, your host just have uh, normal addresses in that provider independent prefix and then you just use your classical protocols at each layer and you have uh, multi homing uh, you have everything the only problem is that you must deal with ISP both to accept uh, both for the ISP to accept uh, your provider independent prefix and then your ISP must also announce to the global internet the provider independent prefix so another solution, as we didn't want to speak with ISPs, is host-centric multi homing So there, each ISP gives you provider-dependent addresses. So your addresses, each uh, addresses you acquire from the ISP is a subset of the addresses of the ISP itself. Each host has addresses from the ISP, and, uh, and that's all. So, each gateway, the, the, uh, the manner you, you must think the thing is that each gateway is bound to the addresses that the provider gives you. And so, if a TCP flow switch from one gateway to another, it will collapse. Just recall that a TCP connection uh, is somewhat defined by its source and its destination. So, if you switch gateway, you switch the addresses uh, for which uh, the gateway is bound, and your TCP flow collapse. So there, are, there, are, uh, there is a solution, which is to use a dedicated server and to build tunnels through each gateway to uh, your server. And then everything just works. You use your traditional routing protocol or other protocols, and all traffic goes to the server and then to the internet. The problem of that is that you have a single, port, a single point of failure, which is a server, and you require an, intern, an external infrastructure. So in the mesh network community, uh, multi-homing or multi-gateways uh, is achieved generally by using tunnels between the nodes and the gateway, such that um, when even when the route will be better to go through another gateway, your tunnel will, uh, keep, will be maintained such that your TCP connection will stay alive. And so there is many implementation. It's in OSR v1, also in BMX, and also in Batman. Uh, so now what is really the problem? The problem is that we want to route packets uh, to some gateways, but we want to keep TCP connections alive. And however, uh, the source address is associated to some gateway. And so the uh, basic idea will be, okay, since uh, we want to send packet to some gateway depending on the source, we want to route packet uh, depending on the source. 
And uh, so there is a, a natural idea which will come from the IPv6 world. Uh, so in that case, uh, so we have IPv6 uh, multi homing and in IPv6, you have a huge branch of address, an infinity, to power 64 at least. And so you can manage to assign one IP address per host. So each host has multiple addresses, and then you just have to route uh, your packet through the network, depending on their source address. So the problem is that the classical uh, routing protocol, was, well, the classical routing uh, paradigm used in the internet is next stop routing, in which each packet is just route depending on its destination uh, prefix. So typically a route will have a routing table, which, just, which is just a map between destination prefix and next stop. So what system administrators uh, does in IPv6 is to build tunnels between the gateways, such that, and then they put some uh, uh, traffic engineering on each gateway to redirect traffic uh, to, uh, through the gateway. So it works uh, very, very good if you have 10 gigabits uh, link between gateways, but of course in the mesh network uh, you will create more interference because your traffic uh, may not uh, follow the best path and uh, it may be uh, not, uh, not suitable for mesh networks. But based on that, uh, as we are draft uh, standing on the shoulder of giant, uh, based on that, it becomes uh, now natural to use source-specific routing. So to extend uh, the classical next of routing by routing now uh, packets both on destination and source. So a routing table will become a map between a pair of prefix, destination, and source to a next stop. And with that uh, technology, multi homing uh, with source specific routing, packets will be directly uh, uh, routed through the right gateway all over uh, your network. And it's a very clean solution because you just have routing. You didn't need extra tunnels or extra technology, and you keep your, your uh, TCP connection. Uh, the problem is that, uh, again, if one gateway is down, okay, your TCP connection uh, will fail. And so for routing, yes, there is uh, already multiple implementations. So the first one was, was done by Marcus Stenberg in OHPF but it was a partial implementation. And then we arrive with, uh, first, with the first real and complete implementation uh, in Babel. And uh, there is also implementation as uh, in OLSR, uh, which has been done, I think, one or two weeks ago uh, by Henning. And so perhaps it will be a future implementations. Uh, so I'm not sure how it may be done in Batman because you didn't have prefix, but in BMX6 it should be uh, possible uh, without any problem. So uh, now I will go a little bit through the Babel uh, routing protocol and how we extend it uh, to source specific routing, and uh, so with three different points. And then afterward, we will, uh, we will see how to choose our addresses. So I'm really sorry, I will be very boring for two minutes. So here is to encourage you to follow it. And uh, okay, that's, that's all. Okay, so. Um, Classically, the classical routing tables, the routing table that you are habituated to is, uh, can match multiple, can, oh, sorry, your routing table can have multiple entries which match the same packets. And so there is an ambiguity. But you are habituated. If you have such routing table with a default route, so all direction going to the right, and a more specific route going to the left, if you want to go to the battle mesh, you will take the more specific route. Clearly, it's a completely, completely intuitive intuition on the, on the road, and that's the same thing that what happens uh, in routing. And the idea behind that is that we have a total order on the, on the routing entry, and that's why it works. In so specific routing, we have the same kind of problems. But that time, you see that in this routing table, we have two entries. But neither is more specific than the, the other. The first is more specific uh, with the destination, and the second is more specific with the source. So the question is, what, what we do? 
uh, there is consensus to route by destination first, and just a remark, it's very important. If your routers uh, have different behaviors, you will have, probably, uh, persistent routing loops. Okay, so that was a boring point. Uh, we must pa route packet by destination first. So you have been to the talk uh, yesterday and you have seen that Babel uh, was carrying uh, packets with some destination and metric. And so we, uh, we extended Babel uh, to add the source specific uh, information. So to keep compatibility with the Babel routing protocol, each classical route, so which is just a destination prefix and with a source prefix, which is our source. We just use the classical uh, Babel messages, but for, for the other, we just use, uh, we need to use three new TLV. And the new TLV will be dropped uh, by uh, classical routing protocols, classical routing uh, Babel nodes, and it's very important for the correctness um, of the routing because of what we've seen uh, previously. So, okay, now we have an extension we can which can compute uh, routing loops, uh, sorry, <laughs> which can compute routing tables uh, without loops, of course, but that is loop free, yes. And uh, now we must to install this route into the kernel. So, okay, we have choose a behavior which is destination first. But now the kernel may choose a different behavior, and so we must deal with that. And it can happen. So in order to, to, to force the kernel to follow our behavior, we have designed a disambiguation regression algorithm. The basic idea is to add uh, routing, additional routing entries into the table, which are more specific than the two others. So at the intersection of uh, two routing, which will be uh, in ambiguity. Uh, this kind of technology is needed in IPv4, and it is needed also, also for other Linux uh, uh, of IPv6. And of course, we must also learn routes from the kernel to announce it. And uh, Babel is able to, to read, so it can be completely automatic in IPv6, but if it's not sufficient, and for example in IPv4, uh, then we can uh, explicitly uh, configure Babel such that it will put the source prefix that we want. So we just use a classical filter, so all the, um, the expressiveness of the classical filters of Babel to redistribute root with a new action, which is source prefix, and it will just put the source prefix that you want. Okay, a little on track. So we have a working version of Babel, which can do plenty, plenty of things, which can be ported to, um, uh, to, to any kernel without many efforts because of the disambiguation algorithm, and which uh, have seen active deployments, especially uh, in Babel, in a home net uh, testbed. So if you want to install a home net router with Babel, you just have to type a package install hash net full, and your open WRT will uh, automatically have a Babel installed, um, and that's it. And so now, uh, I would like to go to the uh, source address selection, because now, if we have host which has multiple address, we must be able to choose the address. In fact, not choosing only the source address, but both the source and the destination address. So there is an RFC for that, but uh, it's not always sufficient, and so there is uh, other works. So, for example, Happy Eyeballs, which tries. Uh, Happy Eyeballs is made for IPv4 and IPv6 uh, dual stack uh, hosts, and so it will try uh, both IPv4 and IPv6 simultaneously and take the first which answer. And uh, there is also other technology, and this is uh, an open research area. But the point is that. I don't like to, to think about addresses, but more, more about paths. Look, you have a host which can select the outgoing path of the packet by selecting the source address. And conversely, the remote host now can also select the incoming path by selecting the destination uh, address of its packet. And so higher layers, so the layer which choose the IP address, can do multi-path. 
So at the, multi -pass, at the transport layer, we have multipass TCP, which is a wonderful protocol, a compatible multipass extension of TCP, which provides reliability and performance you have a, a wonderful uh, graph of load balancing that we run in our test bed. You see, it just use the, the two routes perfectly, and everything just works out of the box with so specific routing. It's wonderful for us and for the world, I hope. And so, but you can, uh, well, sometimes you know that TCP is not uh, the best protocol for your application, and so you can, uh, you can do multipass at application layer. So to have to avoid the TCP transmission or to keep control of what traffic is sent or I don't know to be smarter so you can uh, the TCP will optimize um, the throughput but you prefer you may prefer to optimize the delay or other thing and so for example I have written a multipass application a multipass extension of Mosh but I will not speak about that now and uh, and that's all so now, what we have? We have a source specific routing. So you see that we just use routing, we keep TCP connection, and with multipass protocol, we achieve reliability and best end to end performances. The only problem is that we need routing protocols which are able to do source specific routing. Okay, we have one now, or two, or three, or four. And, uh, and now we need also multipass protocol. So with multipass TCP, it's very wonderful because you just have to, to have multipass TCP on your computer and all your standard TCP, TCP program are multipass. So now there is just a multipass at application layer. So that's it. And so as a conclusion, uh, source specific routing is a, is a good tool for a multi -home network, as we've seen. And we have a, a working production quality uh, source-specific uh, protocol. Thanks for the publicity. And uh, it's usable on uh, Linux, it's portable, it does, it does V4 and V6, uh, and it is used in practice. And uh, finally, uh, well, let's write uh, new multipath uh, applications. Thank you for your attention. Questions, comments, hope. Do, did you see that you added just um, an annexion search specific for, for bubble configuration? There is also a filter available or, or is it just... Uh, yes, you can filter all specific routes uh, as you can filter uh, regular routes. Uh, yes, just nothing. <laughs> well, if you do uh, IPv6, you just nothing to do. It will import your routes uh, from the kernel with the source specific address attached, so you don't need any configuration. But if you are using, for example, IPv4, and you, you know that uh, the addresses from that gateway are in uh, 192 dot something slash 24, you just add, as we've seen, I don't know where. Here, you just have to do uh, redistribute IP 000 equals zero, source, specific, uh, source prefix, and that one. So we, need so we need policy routing for the disambiguation algorithm, so only for IPv4 and all the Linux kernel. And for IPv6, uh, we just use native uh, routing tables of, uh, of Linux, and so everything works. You must have uh, 3.11 or more. Lose source routing? Yeah. What is lose? Sorry? Ah, um, I'm not sure to be aware of that, so. 
Yep. deprecated by the security people. So the security people are the reason we cannot have nice things in the internet. Because whenever you try to do something that's fun, you'll have the security people who tell you, you need a security statement, you need solutions to those problems. And they claim that loose source routing is not secure. Which means, okay, so the idea is that you can bounce a packet and make DOS attacks using loose source routing. And in IPv6 it doesn't work. Now, IPv4 is a legacy protocol that nobody, that almost nobody uses nowadays, and IPv6 you have no loose source route. So in IPv6 and recent kernel, there is only one uh, routing table yeah. which is able to do a source specific routing. When we use, a so, um, so in IPv4 uh, and stuff, we are using multiple routing tables and rules over this table. The problem is that we first match the rules and so after only this destination. And that's why we have the different behavior and that we need to add additional uh, routing entries in the routing table. I will go closer to, to better and... Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, let us assume uh, you have a mesh network. Mesh network. Okay. So it's a multi-gate uh, mesh network. Okay. So to reach the internet, your packet can go through any of one gateway. Okay. So when I executing... So your problem is solving that. Your... Uh, uh, source specific routing is solving that problem, correct? Yeah. Okay. So uh, when you log into some internet service like Facebook or something, okay, so it will uh, create a session for you. So whenever uh, next time while doing the routing, if your uh, packet go different uh, gateway, then uh, your session will be logged out. Mm -hmm. So that means every time when uh, the gateway is changing, you have to log in again and again. Yeah. It irritates people. So, so that, that was all the point of uh, the first part of the, uh, the talk, which is that um, your gateway is bound to some IP addresses. Yeah. So source-specific routing will keep, well, when you send packets to, to your session, you will keep uh, the, same, the same path to that gateway. So you will keep your session and you will not have problems. No? In, in any case, um, most web services uh, now use cookies to identify sessions. Okay. And these are, these are the systems that cause changes in your idea. Okay, so the services uses uh, IP and, uh, cookies. If, if the session changes the IP address also, it can able to identify, is it correct? Yeah, actually in, uh, in Europe, uh, <laughs> no, no, whenever I try to access some uh, European website, it's asking me that, uh, can you allow to store cookies? But this one I never faced on some other Facebook or uh, 
some other website. It never says me that can I allow cookies. That of course is biggest because Facebook is not based in Europe. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm telling. So. Um, <laughs> They don't ask you permission, mm. but they use it anyway. Oh, okay. They're not asking my permission. Exactly. In Europe, they have to ask your permissions. Oh. In other countries, they not, don't need that. Oh, okay. okay. But they use it. They use it. Okay. Thanks. So your, um, your TCP connection, well, we use the same path from your host to the server, so it should use the same session. Uh. For all TCP connections? Ah, no, well. So, in the basic, uh, so in the basic design, uh, well, it depends also of, it depends on the source uh, selection algorithm. So if you have basic TCP, so which is single path, um, it will depend on the source selection algorithm, if, uh, which depends also on the, on the destination address. So it may be a different path, but for the same destination, it should be the same path always. Now. I can add just a word. I agree entirely with what Mathieu has just said. But the point is, the point that might not be entirely clear is that the source selection, so the path depends on the source address. And the source address, and that's great, is under control of the application. So if you're using an application that makes stupid choices for source address and decides to use to the same websites which addresses arbitrarily, you're going to get into trouble. But it's the application. You control the application. The ISPs don't choose the addresses. The network doesn't choose the address. It's your application. So let's write smart applications. And that's the end of Matthias' talk. We do. We do. We do. We are working on it. The Google people are well aware of this work. OK, we have been working on making BitTorrent applications smart. Right now it's Views, surprisingly, which is the most advanced in those situations. We are working on that right now, and you will get all the sh nice, shiny applications, assuming, of course, that you use free software. Yeah. <laughs> you can also add that um, addresses coming and going and changing is not specific to source-specific routing. If you have your phone, that is going to change IP addresses all the time as you roam to different Wi-Fi networks. So the application developers are going to have to solve this one way or another, and, and that's not specific to this application. I, I, I really hate that people teach the seven layer ISO model because there's no session layer and that's why IPv6 and IPv4 transition is taking so long. So uh, we have to do a session layer ad hoc to get there in the long run. Anything else? So. What I want to point out and is that in any case, having source-specific routing will help the uh, stupid application to work better because they will, you, when, when an application choose an address, stick with it. It's not changing it uh, each second. So source-specific routing help that application to, to, to do the same path every time.
Okay, so perhaps uh, I may do a talk, uh, a lightning talk about uh, multipath mosh if people are interested. And uh, who who will be interested? Okay, so <laughs> if the if the XT file is agreed. <laughs> Okay, so thanks for your attention, for your question. <laughs>